Hello and welcome to this week's episode of How to Be a Great GM, taking you through my campaign creation process for the adventures that I will be running in the Ghosts of Salt Marsh. That's the live RPG session that I will be running on the Dungeons and Dragons Twitch channel. That's twitch.tv forward slash dnd from the 25th of May this year at 1 p.m. Pacific time. That's 8 p.m. GMT. So. I'm going to be running that game. I am very, very nervous. We've got just under 20 days, a little bit less actually, uh, until the game launches. And we need to come up with a campaign. And the campaign needs to run for 12 episodes. And, well, if you didn't watch last week's episode of this entire series, then, well, <laughs> you wouldn't know. If you go back to last week, you will see that I listed out everything that we need to worry about in terms of this campaign from a timing perspective and everything that we must draw on and understand and etc etc so now i'm pointing behind me because i forgot to switch over switching over when we are designing our campaign here's where we go we go to our campaign planner look at it it's all that, oh, there goes my hand um ar i be a pirate i don't have a f hand ar 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 what a shame etc yeah anyway uh right so this is our campaign a master plot adventure outline uh, you can get this template from my website, www.greatgamemaster.com. It's free. Go download it if you want to, if you like what you see in today's video. So I'm going to be filling in this. I am also going to be filling in, he said, this template, which features, it's also available online. It's there. It's available for you to use. A lot of people ask questions about this one because it is a little bit more complicated. And I didn't explain it as well as I could have in this book, he said, pulling it out suddenly. This is the book that I wrote called The Complete Guide to Creating Epic Campaigns. Again, it's available from our website. You can go and pull that down where I unpack this entire process in book form. People have been very happy with the book, which is why I'm quite happy to promote it. Uh, most I haven't had anyone write back saying, well, it's terrible. I should be a waste of time. Anyway, so those are that's where the explanations come from for these templates. You can also watch the videos on this YouTube channel where you can find everything. Okay, enough of that from me in terms of explaining everything that I have uh, just gone through over the last course of two years on this YouTube channel. This is our template that's behind us. What is our sentence? What is our beginning sentence? Now, obviously, I am work Oh, wait, let me do this before I go there. Spoilers! This contains mega spoilers. If you are going to be watching, and I hope that you do because your support would be amazing, just to show that, yes, you know, we can run Dungeons & Dragons games. Uh, if you are going to be watching The Ghosts of Salt Marsh, if you're going to be watching the Ghosts of Salt Marsh on the Dungeons and Dragons channel, absolutely fine. However, this is me planning the entire campaign and every adventure that's going to go into it. So, if you watch this episode, you are going to get spoilers. Bear that in mind. I also will be referencing certain things from within the game, uh, the, the Ghosts of Salt Marsh adventure book, which is coming out, available 21st of May. So look out for that. Put a pre-order in with Amazon. Do whatever it is that you need to do to get a copy of this amazing book. I will be referencing certain things within that book, but I don't believe that they are spoilers because they have been referenced on YouTube elsewhere and earlier and have had been and been released by Dungeons & Dragons beforehand. So there is certain aspects to that. On top of that, there are also things that I am creating specifically for this campaign, which have no real existence. So that's all that's all going to get brought in, in, in. OK, so what is our single sentence for this 12 episode campaign? Now, I haven't worked it out yet. This is me pushing this out to you. Part of our expectations is this aquatic oriented this naval oriented space and the Sahagan feature quite predominantly in terms of our consciousness around aquatic environments Sahagan killer whales sharks mermaids mermen um, maybe uh, Locantha something along those lines but not 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 much more than that own oh, Kraken Kraken of course feature um, heavily so when we look at this kind of stuff and we say, right, what is our sentence? And we look at Salt Marsh, we look at how Salt Marsh is positioned within the book and the underlying conflicts that are suggested within the book. 
I think it behooves us to do a story. It behooves us to come up with an idea. And I like the word behoove, by the way. It, it, it inspires us to come up with a story with us. Haugen are the principal protagonists uh, in terms of our nemesis. If we make the Sahagan our nemesis, it starts to drive a narrative. It starts to drive a whole lot of things. Control of the ocean. But Sahagan are amphibious, so they can go up onto land. Are they amphibious? I think they're amphibious. Ye old trusty monster's manual. Give me a second. And yes, I want to make absolutely sure. No, I'm not going to edit it out. There we go. Sahagan. Um, beautiful illustration of the Sahagan, by the way. Love, love the Sahagan and how they've evolved over time. Sahagan, uh, limited amphibiousness. Sahagan can breathe air and water, but it needs to be submerged at least once every four hours to avoid suffocating. Now, Dungeons and Dragons does not differentiate between salt water and fresh water. That has been done away with long ago. It was very, way too complicated. Um, they have elven enmity. The Sahagan might control the oceans. Um, if it were not for the presence of the immortal enemies, the aquatic elves. Now, that's an interesting thing. That's from the DMG, that, that, from the Monsters Manual. That has anything to do with Gods of Salt Marsh. Um, so, uh, Devils of the Deep, Sahagan are predatory. Um, they are self-styled rulers of the, of the domain. So, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, all of the stuff that starts to come through. So, I think Sahagan are going to be our principal foes. So how can grow four arms, by the way? I think that's pretty cool that they grow four arms when they become a baron, um, which is an interesting addition to the race. So Sahagan are going to be our, our, our enemy of choice. And what we're going to do with those Sahagan is we're going to say, right, so the Sahagan want something. Now, what is it that they want? There are two adventures um, in the book that do talk about the Sahagan. They are... As it's written, you can choose which adventures you want to incorporate. So if the Sahagan want something, and it's around the salt marsh, it is around, it is around oop, salt marsh. What is it that they want around salt marsh? I like the idea of the undead. I'm very cautious of not doing a Pirates of the Caribbean. That's been done. So... Ghosts of Salt Marsh, I, I like that idea. I like tying in that idea. What I'm thinking is, what if we had an undead lich or we had um, an undead someone or other who was originally part of Salt Marsh, but who has now died and has been wronged? Now, automatically, I can hear all of your eyes rolling. I really can. Automatically, my brain goes... It was a pirate captain, or it was a captain whose ship was sunk in Salt Marsh, or it was a captain who was wronged by Salt Marsh. However we want to express it, if we have an undead sitting in behind this whole thing, I think that ties in the title Ghosts of Salt Marsh quite well. I tentatively gave it the title Call of the Kraken, just as a sort of uh, catchphrase, if you like. So I have to include a kraken somehow in the game. What if we had this undead lich who rides a kraken? Or rides an undead kraken? A cracker lich? Mm. Okay, great stuff. We're going to come back to all of that a little bit later on. Right, so we have this lich who's riding a cracker lich. Um, <laughs> it's a thing now. Because, um, you know, what's more terrifying than a kraken? An undead kraken. So this cracker lich is being ridden by this lich who wants revenge. The revenge, the way they're going to do it is they're going to help the Sahaugen overcome the forces of salt marsh why would the sahaugen well the crackalich the crackalich the lich obviously wants to take over salt marsh because of previous enmities they wronged me and so i will destroy them it's a stock standard ploy it also implies that our lich is not going to be quiet our lich is not going to be a mentor lich our lich is not going a nemesis our nemesis is also not going to be a never seen um behind the scenes kind of of nemesis our nemesis is going to be a blunt force trauma nemesis they are going to be directly involved one way or another our party is going to have to fight this lich at the end of the campaign because well that's the threat that there is to the entire party. So there is our sentence. Our lich wants to reclaim salt marsh, or wants to, our lich wants to invade and destroy salt marsh by a specific time. 
by a specific time. Okay, that specific time is going to be before they lose their power. Why would they lose their power? What if they've been losing power? Or what if there is something that allowed them to come back? Aha, 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 aha. Okay, so our lich needs to reclaim salt marsh before the portal that was created is closed. Okay, we'll come back to it. Well, is closed and they use a Sahaugan army, but they are having difficulty getting salt marsh because there are active forces preventing them from doing that. They need salt marsh is heavily defended. Well, it isn't in the book, but maybe it could be. There are certain things that could contribute to that. Okay, all right. So our, our general outline is the Lich wants to take over salt marsh using Sahagan forces before the portal that allows the Lich to exist closes. And they are having difficulty because salt marsh has allies which are too strong for the Sahagan to completely destroy salt marsh, perhaps. Okay, right, good. So if that is our sentence, in broad strokes, that is our sentence. I need to write this down because I'm going to forget it. Um, right, time for a new a new book. So this is this is just me. I'm just going to just jot this down very quickly. Um, Lich take salt marsh using Sahagin before undead portal closes and kills Lich but is having difficulty because Salt Marsh has strong defenses aka pcs gather defenses all right so the pcs are going to be bringing about the defense of salt marsh and i like that so all that we need to do now is unpack that and that's what we're going to do here so let's start unpacking so uh blah, blah, blah. what are we doing uh well we're going to change our font size firstly uh, let's make that something usable um, and I think that I think that's usable I think that's usable we're gonna change its color as well so we make sure it's legible good fine thank you um, so adventure number one adventure number one is I would say because we need to get stuff but we also need to establish the setting and the situation I'm gonna say is sea battle sea battle uh, aquatic races um, Sahaugen, Hogan, Sahaugen, um, Sea Battle, Aquatic Races, Sahaugen, and uh, Rumors of the Lich. Okay, and then we need Salt Marsh as our as our hello and welcome to Salt Marsh. Great. So that is adventure number one done and it's a dramatic start because we expect sea battles well <laughs> there is a sea battle for you are we going to give the players a ship i think so it's nice for them to have a ship they can have a ship so we can take it away the ship becomes something that they can invest into it becomes something that they can spend money on it becomes something that makes the ocean a reason for them to stay why stay in a salt marsh it's a dangerous place let's head inland where there is no aquatic stuff there's no there's no crackleage I have to make that monster now. I really need to stat the monster up. So there's no crackleage. There's none of that kind of nonsense going on. It, 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 why stay there? Because our ship is there. Okay. So their ship is there. We've established all of this stuff. Let's go away. Let's break away from this now. Let's start to add in some some of the adventures from the actual adventure book, The Ghost of Salt Marsh. One of those uh, adventures, one of the, the, the very first adventures, is the Sinister Secrets. So I'm going to put in Sinister Secrets. Sinister secret. Okay, of Salt Marsh. Right, so there we go. Uh, that's the first adventure, and that adventure we said is going to take. Uh, we it's going to take two, uh, three episodes. So Sinister Secret, 
Sinister Secret, Sinister Secret. Great. Now, we're working for 12 episodes here, so we're already on four episodes done and dusted. Now we need to start establishing, We well, uh, in Sinister Secret, one of the things that we need to do, let me come back here, one of the things that we need to do is we need to establish um, Sahaugen um, involvement. Okay. Now, I can tell you right away, if you're going to have a look at that uh, Sinister Secret of Salt Marsh, it was written in the 80s, it does not involve the Sahagan. We're going to have to add that in. Not a problem. Not a problem. Okay, so there we go. That's our getting stuff. What are they getting? What are the Sahagan getting? Um, remember, they're trying to invade Salt Marsh. So I would imagine at the moment, what they're trying to get is information. They are testing the strength of... Or perhaps in our very first adventure, the sea battle, uh, perhaps where we've got the Sahagan involved, perhaps they're testing a new weapon, something that the Lich has given them that allows them to do something. Uh, so we can we can think about that. Uh, we need to establish that they are again involved. Now, Sinister Secret of Salt Marsh is quite a long adventure. It's quite quite well, depending on how the players run it. Um, there are some elements to it that result in smugglers being discovered and, and, and the like. If the Sahaugen are involved in terms of um, that kind of thing, that would be an interesting development. Then, once we're done with Sinister Secrets, we could then go into the next one, which uh, is in the book, which I quite enjoyed. It involves lizard folk. Now, lizard folk are also, they're not aquatic, but they are definitely, definitely capable of holding their breath for 15 minutes underwater or in any environment, really. So there is an adventure in there where we could look at the uh, lizard folk involvement, which is quite fun. I do like it. I'm just worried I'm going to run out of time. So let's see. Right. Um, building stuff. They need to start putting it all together. And in this case, the PCs not start to need to put it together. So we're going to, I'm going to put in that adventure. And I forget the name of the adventure, but we're going to put in here Lizard Folk Alliance? Question mark. Now, there's a wonderful link uh, in, in, in the adventures, but we'll make sure that that happens. So I'm going to say that that takes two, two sessions. Two sessions, probably. Because it's not it's not huge, it's not overly complicated unless they unless the players really muck it up. But I think that's that's what we're going to do there. I think then that we need to then break away. I've, we've had enough of this. I think we need to go underwater. So we're going to go aquatic um, adventure slash PC background. Now, I'm sure when I offer my PCs, you can play uh, merfolk who can walk on land, so you're not, you're not too hindered, or you can play um, whatever, uh, Koliath. Koliath? Kolianth? Kolianth. I think Kolianth is the uh, hobgoblin um, version underwater, nonetheless. So aquatic adventure, PC background, that's great. Uh, we're going to put in, say, two of those. Then we're going to come back to Salt Marsh. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that would be the end of the adventure. So then this last thing is where we're going to have to have our big showdown uh, with 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 the, the Undead Lich. Okay, great. So then we need uh, testing stuff is we need them to then uh, discover the Lich's plans. Okay. Now this is slightly no slightly different to how I normally build adventures. Uh, 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 my my master plot normally a master plot is deri driven specifically from the the nemesis's perspective. In this case, the nemesis has tested out some things. They've started to notice there's this lizard alliance. Possibly the aquatic adventure will result in that as well. So the lich is now going to have to step up their plans, and that's going to allow our players to to discover that the, the plans of the lich. And then I think what we're going to have to do is this final one. So this is our last one. Uh, this is the climax battle um, slash defeat of Lich. And this needs to be naval, aquatic, um, ship battles, um, ship battles. This needs to be awesome. This needs to be truly, truly, truly awesome. Um, I'm actually going to put it down here. <clears throat> 
because then that just puts us in 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 our blocks um so we've got the discovery of the lich's plans then i think what we need to do is we need to have in here um there is a an adventure in the book which talks about the sahagan so i think it could be fun to put that in um sahagan adventure and that is possibly going to take us two episodes and that's our 12 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 done there's our campaign and it only took 20 minutes plus some explanation and pontification and um, mastication so that's that's it that's all we need to worry about we need to come in here and, and add in some more details without a doubt we need to add in some more details there's 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 a lot of stuff missing in here now why have i not finished doing this because i'm going to go here and i'm going to come in to the space here now let's start to unpack this who is the someone who wants something i'm going to write down instead of name up there i'm going to write down our sentence um so lich wants salt salt marsh uh, having difficulty using Sahaugan forces because PCs raise defenses. Right. I think that was our sentence. Not a very nice font. Uh, not a lot of gap in here. I will just add that to make it a little more legible not a huge amount of difference anyway <laughs> okay so our lich who who is this individual this individual is a lich we can give this individual a name and the lich's name um admiral because that's always fun or sea lord no sea lord admiral sea lord admiral admiral doesn't matter we'll call him admiral for now so it's admiral havost just a name uh havost um gankari havost gankari there we go i don't know where that name came from it just did uh no, 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 don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. This is the problem of recording these videos live. Right, uh, so we're going to just close up that gap there, and we're going to make this a little bit oh, too small, too small, too small. We're going to do that, lift that up there, go to paragraphs, so that's nice and neat, and there we go. Admiral Havost Gankari. I think that's quite nice. Admiral Gankari. Yeah, something like that. Right, what... What is this person all about? So when you look at this block, this is how this block works. So who, Admiral Havost, uh, Genkari, who is what he wants? That's Salt Marsh. Salt Marsh um, destroyed. Okay. Who or what? Uh, uh, who is the specific time frame? Well, the specific time frame is this portal, which, as you've seen in the video, I wasn't particularly convinced by. There needs to be something that's happening. Now, normally we'd go, "Oh, the planets have aligned." Yes, but that doesn't sit well with me. It's not. It's not nautical enough. It's not drawing on what we expect. So, what if it's the currents? So, what if there is a red tide? Uh, it's awfully cliched. What if there is simply a current within the ocean? Ooh. What if there's an undead current? Like a, a current that washes around the oceans and basically is filled with necromantic energy because of the, all the death that happens in the ocean. Of all the the monstrosities that live in the dark deep. It kind of seeps out of the ocean floor and gathers in little pools and sometimes it collects into a force strong enough to be able to swirl and wash around. The black tide. Aha! Aha! The black 
tied. There we go. Look at that. You see you see what happens when you think about this thing. You try and bring it back to your theme or back to your setting in this case. The black tide, um, necromantic uh, water current um, that forms every hundred years and lasts for 60 days. I don't know. I don't know. So I'm going to blo block this in here. Right. Good. Great. Fantastic. And I really don't mind that it runs over multiple of these blocks. And you're going to see why in a little bit, in a little bit, why that's happening. Okay. So then having difficulty, who is causing the difficulty? In this case, I'm going to say is the allied races. And that is going to be merfolk, aquatic elves, because we've established, uh, the books have established that Sahaugan are against the uh, aquatic elves. Merfolk, aquatic elves, lizard folk, because having, yes, your water is protected, but if your land is just defended by the humans, that's a problem. Uh, aquatic elves, lizard folk, merfolk, um, tritons. Tritons are a thing, and they are a playable race now in D&D. Okay, Tritons, Tritons. I wish they hadn't called them Tritons. Um, tritons, uh, Locantha. They're a weird fish race. I like the Locantha. Um, yeah, okay. I think that's enough. Uh, what, about, what about crab people? Crab people. Why not? So... Crabkin. Great! I don't know if they exist. We'll go and find them, and if not, we'll make them up. Right, so there are our um, races. Those are our, our allied races. That's what's causing the difficulty. He is using the Sahaugen. Who Who is he using? He is using the Sahaugen. And that would be Baron uh, Merman. Merman? I, I think Skeletor. And He-Man and the Master of the Universe. And I think Merman when I think Sahagan. <laughs> Baron. Uh, Tavark. Gankari. Tavark. Different enough. Uh, Tavark. Baron Tavark. Tavark. Baron Tavark. I am Baron Tavark. Trying to figure out the sound, the type of sound. Blah, 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 very floppy. Blah, 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 Baron Tavark. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Right. Having difficulty using them because, okay, of the PCs. No, no, don't apply a transform. I don't want to transform anything. Just move it. Okay. Great. And who is the difficulty in, well, who is, why are the Sahagan not winning? And I think this is because of the PCs. Okay. So that is how we link it together. So the PCs are directly involved. They're not incidentally involved. They should be actively trying to work against this entire situation. Good stuff. Now we can break it down further. I'm just going to make this smaller. Arrivederci. Off you go. Yeah, not too small. I'm going to be able to read the bloody thing. Mm, okay, and then I'm going to do this and just bring them up onto the same lines. So that at least we, we get a sense of something that's very, very small. Anyway, you don't have, I mean, you print this out and then you don't have this problem, right? Okay, good. Right, fine. Now, what? What is Admiral Havast Gankari's power? What allows him to actually activate this whole thing? To do what he does? What allows him to do that? I think we're going to put in here... Um, well, I think his... his he has to have something that he's holding over Baron um, uh, Takark. Baron Takak needs to 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 fear something or to to be underfoot of this lich for some reason. Baron Takak needs that. So, um, Gankari is a powerful. He made a pact 
when he died, his ship was going down, he cursed Saltmarsh. With his final breath, he cursed to that Saltmarsh that he would return one day from beyond the grave and destroy it, as it, as it so deserves. So he has the power, I'm going to say this, can control the Black Tide. So, in other words, he is saying, serve me, or I will send the Black Tide to your... I will send the Black Tide to your territory. Now, the Black Tide only lasts for 60 days. So the Sahaugan can't refuse, and they know that they're only going to be under control for 60 days. So that's fine. I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, Once something Salt Marsh destroyed. What is Salt Marsh? Salt Marsh is, and I don't really have to fill this in. I'm just doing it for completion's sake. The um, coastal human harbor. And town. I mean, it, it's, it's all it's all interlinked. Okie dokes. Um, by a specific time. Well, what is it? It's a necromantic, uh, the black tide, necromantic water currents that form every hundred years and last for sixty days. Okay, so that's 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 answered its own question. Um, what are the allied races? Okay, um, uh, because that's part of the difficulty. So what what are they doing that prevents his action from happening? Well, what they are doing is collectively stronger than Sahaugan. Okay? So they are collectively stronger than the Sahaugan. Good stuff. Lovely. Using uh, the Takak, what is the Tuk what does Baron Takak have? Large armed forces of Sahaugan. And again, it is Sahaugan. You can unpack this as much as you like. I'm not going to carry on very much more for this because, as you can see, all that it's doing is it's just inspiring. It's just developing. It's just giving us a sense of this world and this space. So now when I come back here, look at what I can do. I, the, the, the Sahaugan involvement, I need to introduce way earlier, somewhere, I'm guessing, I'm guessing here. The Black Tide. I now need to introduce the Black Tide as soon as I can. I can't do it in these two adventures, in the Sinister Secret of Salt Marsh, I can't do it in those two spaces because it's not based, it's on the coast, it's not based in the water. This part, however, does get to the waterline, hopefully, and then they can see the Black Tide. The Lizard Alliance, again, doesn't have very much going on in terms of, of uh, water sides. They do have something to do with the Sahagan, which is absolutely fine. So again, the Black Tide is going to come in here. The Black Tide starts to become our, our, our symbol. This is potentially how um, Gankari can be involved in terms of driving the plot so the actual admiral himself doesn't engage in combat but he sends out the black tide the force that he controls and i think that that could be really 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 useful so yeah we can just carry on going through this we can start to unpack okay so where is he based where is the um admiral gankari based well look if he well the ship idea would be great. It has been done many, 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 many times. Obviously, he has his Admiral's ghost ship. Um, so we, we, I think we kind of have to give it to him. I think we have to give it to him. I can't think of any excuse why we can't, apart from, oh, look, there's the Admiral's ghost ship. Well, what if it's not a ghost ship? What if the ship sank and it's being held together by the, 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 the crackleage? Okay. So the ship... Uh, he would have served the Lord, and that's King Scotty. Is it King Scotty? No, it's not King Scotty. It's King King Scotty. Scotty. Sco Scotty. I, I will check. Um, that's the king that they've installed within the setting, which is not a problem. I don't have a problem with that. Um, so it would be um, his um, Majesty's ship, HMS. Um, 
no, let's put it this way. Royal, uh, King's Royal Ship. King's Royal Ship, I think, is better. Although King's Royal is pretty redundant. Royal Highnesses, no. His Royal Highnesses Ship, no. Royal Military Ship. Royal Military Ship. RMS. Royal Military Ship to indicate that it's a Royal Military Ship as opposed to a CMS which would be a civilian, no, a, a Royal Civilian Ship. Uh, no. Uh, RHS. Royal Human Ship. And then CHS. Civilian Human Ship. Royal Human Ship Civilian. I get sometimes a little. Uh, the name of Gankari's ship. Um, I would say we could call it something like the Dark Thunder, or Vengeance, or um, um, Battle uh, Sea Dog, or War Dog. Let's slip the dogs of war. Uh, what about the um, the Fist of uh, whatever the name of the kingdom would be, uh, or the Spear of uh, you? It's the dominator, the the um, uh, the black guard, no, the the tide uh, crusher, the wave killer, the wave dancer, the wave, the titan, the the um, victory, victorious titan, the victorious wave, the wave of victoriousnessnessnessness. This can take some time, um, especially when we're looking at something that symbolizes this whole thing. Um, what about the sea crest? Nah, 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 that's boring. Uh, we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. We'll think about it. Okay, so that's where he's based, uh, but underneath it is a... Krakowicz. It's got to happen. I've got to do it. Krakowicz. 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 Uh, Krakowicz holds remains of ship together. Well, I think it should just simply be called the Kraken's Call. It's the Kraken's call. She sank 50 year ago. What's she doing? Well, it would have been 100 years ago because she would have sunk. She would have got caught into the black tide as it washed past. Um, spend 100 years brooding. Yes. Okay. So the Kraken's call. There we go. Kraken's call um, or call of the Kraken as the title would suggest, which is not on your screen, but it is on mine. Um, so <laughs> Kraken's call. Krakowicz holds the remains of the ship together. That's wonderful. I think. I think. I think. I get, I get, all right. Um, yes, so Salt Marsh, where is Salt Marsh? It's on the coast of the Azure Sea. Uh, there's not much more that I can I can put there, except I'm going to say here at the confluence. Ooh, look at that word. Confluence of the aquatic elves, merfolk, tritons, and... Ah, uh, uh, no. I'm going to be simple. At the confluence of all defending races territory. So in other words, and this is this is important, and this is why I think Salt Marsh becomes the, 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 the battleground, is it is right positioned that there's the human kingdom, the lizard folk kingdom, the under at the point of the ocean, you've got the aquatic elves, you've got the tritons, you've got the merfolk. All of them are at this one point, and that is salt marsh. That's important because that, that, that allows our alliance to build and it allows everything else to build. How long is this video? My goodness. Um, so yes, there is that uh, to bear in mind. 
Having difficulty, where is this race, uh, this alliance based? Um, where is it formed? We could we could break this down if we wanted to. We don't have to fill in all these blocks either. It's just about the blocks that get us to really think and really understand and uh, really comprehend. Where are the Sahaugen? If this is the confluence of all of those races, where are the Sahaugen? This is something that does come directly out of the book. Everything else, by the way, all of this other stuff at the moment, uh, is inspired by the book, but doesn't come out of the book. This comes out of the book. Um, is establishing a remote base of operations. So that is that is something that comes out of the book. It is an adventure from the book. Um, I can confirm that. And this is is here. This is here and and here, as a matter of fact. So we're going to learn about that as we get there, right? Um, because where are the PCs? The PCs are on their ship. It's on their ship. I'm not going to name their ship because it's their ship. It's up to them to name. So that means we need to give them a ship. We need to give them a ship. They need to have a ranking structure. They need to have a captain. They need to have a first officer. They need to have all of that kind of stuff. That brings into play a lot of things for them as players. So I will be sending them to all of my GM videos on how to be a good player in terms of dealing with rank, dealing with authority. When you have authority, how do you express that authority? How do you express your authority when you are in a position of power? How do you play the role of the captain without domineering the rest of your crew, without kind of dictating what they must do? How do you handle ranking structure like that? That's important for us to, to unpack and understand. When we look at the what of the PCs, what are the PCs? Again, that's entirely for them to come up with, but because Ghost of Saltmarsh provides us with this amazing structure in terms of rank on ship and the like, that's what they're gonna have to comply with. So that's very exciting for them to look at. Um, right, we've got some time period. When? Well, we've already got our time period for this this Black Tide, which is pretty cool. Um, we're going to then unpack, uh, well, when does he want to attack Salt Marsh? Or when did Admiral Gankari take over? Now, as I'm saying Admiral Gankari, I am realizing that the naming conventions that have been used in the book are very Dungeons and Dragons-esque. And what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is that Dungeons and Dragons tends to have a naming convention like um, Thodor Iron Fist or Mindori Sea Swimmer. They generally have a name at the end, the character's closing name, generally speaking, especially the more modern literature, uh, is not a made up surname it's a descriptor of the character so ironborn war for i mean there's the races but so i'm thinking that havos needs his name again kari needs to change a little bit and uh i wonder if oathbreaker would no because that's 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 lord of the rings the oathbreakers were the undead no no, no. see we've got to avoid we've got to unpack these things and avoid them anyway that's something to bear in mind uh gankari we're going to come back to that um blackbeard i mean blackbeard is 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 our own history we actually we had a blackbeard um Anyway, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. So when does he want to do this? He wants to do this as soon as possible, but he's got to wait for his forces to happen. Um, that ties into that. There's that specific time frame. He's got to do it within 60 days. We know that. Um, when is this alliance going to happen as fast as the PC is going to do that? Why? Why does he want to do this? Why is Gankari doing this? It's a good question. It's a good question. We can answer it now, and if we answer it now, it makes our master plot a little bit stronger because we can add in some detailing as we're going along. So let's come back to this. So why does he want to do it? So RHS Kraken's Call um, protected Salt Marsh 100 years ago. Major battle where ship was um, abandoned by king to sink. Uh, Havost 
swore um, cursed salt marsh with his revenge uh, before being swallowed in black tide. Okay, so that's why he's doing it. We don't really need to go much more into it than that, as far as I'm concerned. That kind of solves that solves pretty much all of the questions that we might have. Um, it gives us it gives us opportunities to include uh, this history um, as casual conversation. Uh, if we if we if we so need to, it gives us the opportunity to to unpack this further if we want to and make this smaller so that it'll fit in the box. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to go squeeze you in. It doesn't have to look pretty. It just has to be legible. So yes, there we go. So there was a major battle. He got abandoned by his king, so he feels forsaken and so has now returned with vengeance to destroy uh, this this space. How does he control the Black Tide? Well, I think he is bound. So he is bound to the power of the Black Tide, but his curse gives him, tem him temporary control. Ah, oh, look at that. Fits. Okay, you might not be able to read it. I'm sorry. Okay, so he is bound to the power of the Black Tide, but his curse allows him to control Black Tide. He so cursed it. He was so against it that this is this is what allowed him to do that. Okay, fantastic. So what we have done now is we've unpacked this Admiral Gankari. And um, I think it's it's something that has helped. It's definitely helped us. There's no doubt about it definitely helped us. We can continue to fill in these blocks. I'm not sure there's a huge amount left for us to really unpack in terms of our major plot. Now, sometimes you might not have an answer for some of these things. So then you leave them blank and you move on to the next one. You move on to the next one. You move on to the next one. So that eventually you get enough of a, an inspiration to sit back and go, actually, our, our story, I think, is pretty strong. This undead admiral who has this ship, the Kraken's Call, has control over the Black Tide. He's using Baron Takark, who he has threatened. Uh, oh, why? Why? We can put in here, just as a reminder. Um, Gankari threatened to unleash the Black Tide upon the Sahaugen if they did not help him. Right. Great. And what that does, it gives me another plot idea. If he could release this upon the Sahagin, why does he not release this upon those that would defy him, the allied races? Those are things that we often find as bones of contention. And I agree, they should be bones of contention. Because why doesn't he? I think he does. So this aquatic adventure, The Black Tide, um, tries to destroy aquatic race. So we kind of had it there, but now we have more definition. This Black Tide is trying to destroy the aquatic race, and that's why the PCs get involved. That's why the PCs get involved, is because they're trying to have to have to try and save it. So there we go. That's Brillo's. Right. Again, as I said, oh, I think we're done with the box. We're not done with the boxes. There are so many things that we can come in. We look at it and we go, okay, cool. Why would these races ally? The entire crux of Dragon Age, the first game that came out, the entire crux was the alliances. And the alliances were called upon due to this ancient contract that had been established. 
I don't like the idea of using that in this case because otherwise it becomes a go fetch. Go fetch the alliance that binds the aquatic elves to us. Go fetch the alliance that does this. Go fetch the alliance that does that. I don't think the PCs need to be too heavily involved in the politics of causing these alliances to happen. I think they need to be in, in instigators in allowing these things to happen and we need the races to be into, integrated into the PCs psyche so when the races are present in the final battles it makes sense. But I don't think that we need to, to, to go into too much of the detail around that. If you look at, at The Hobbit, there's the Battle of the Five Armies, which is something that kind of happened in the background. Well, it did, unless you watch the movies and watch the time. Uh, but anyway, it happens. It does. It does happen. So um, why would the races come together? We'll think about it. Well, think about it. There is a reason for the humans and the lizard folk to come together. That's outlined in the adventure within the book. But why would the why would the rest of the, why would the underwater folk come together? Well, because the threat that the black tide presents, perhaps uh, that's one or two of them. It's not all of them. We need to think. We need to unpack that a bit more. I'll come back to that one. Uh, why does the black tide only last for sixty days? It's um, well. It constantly moves around and loses energy over time. That's, that's why. Is that something that's usable or useful? Can our players use this information in any way? Not really. Do we want them to? We want them to have control of the Black Tide. No, I don't think so. I think it needs to be this terrifying thing that happens because it allows us to have a sequel. <laughs> the tide returns. No, we're all screwed now. No, we, uh, it doesn't matter about it being a sequel. But generally speaking, I do also try and figure out, OK, how do we get this so that it links to being something that the players could have something to do with? So in this case, they have to wait it out. And that in itself can be an adventure, by the way. We've got to wait out the next 30 days. Oh my goodness. It's a siege. It becomes a siege, basically. Or it affects, it acts like a siege. And if you haven't watched the videos on sieges, well, you'll see that there are hundreds of options for us to play with there. So there is definitely something to look at. Um, the rest, I think it's finally time to say, okay, done. Now, we can then bring in our theme. Now, we haven't spoken about theme and I think I'm going to speak about theme next week because this is a ridiculously long video. So theme, expectation, establishment and difference we're going to talk about next week. So until next week, I wish you and yours the very happiest of campaigning.